Daily Dozen, episode number three. We're the recruiting roundup guys, powered by Rock and Refuel Varsity, Jason Jewell, Scout.com. I'm Jared Cohen. Episode three starts with a breakout player from last season, Higley quarterback Mason Crosland. Last year, 95 point game against Apache Junction was Higley. He became the single game passing yard record holder. It was Mason Crosland. He had 34 touchdown passes last year, and that was without having started the entire year. Tyler Bloom, who's now at Queen Creek, started the season at quarterback. Crosland is back. Higley's going to have another very potent offense led by him leading the way. I'm going to go to a kicker. Connor Culp, Desert Vista, the state's top kicker, most highly ranked guy by Scout.com, three-star guy. Recently committed to LSU, big-time uh, big commitment for Culp and that program over at Desert Vista. Talked to Dan Hines. He's just a big fan of his. Uh, Hines was just very, very high. Praised him on, how, on his commitment to work to be the best to get to that level. Now, uh, Culp's stats, they're not going to wow you from last year. He was 8 of 8 on PATs, and he was 1 of 1 along with 34 on his field goals. But he looked great at LSU's camp, was awesome. And pretty much committed on the spot. Defensive tackle out of Desert Ridge, DJ Davidson, was one of the most imposing figures I saw during spring ball this past year. He had a great year as a junior going into his senior year. He needs to have more attention recruiting because there are few better defensive linemen than him in this state. You look at his legs and they are just trunks down there, and you know that the Jags love the guys that they pride themselves in the trenches. Davidson's leading the way on the defensive side of the ball for the, the, for the Jags in those trenches. Now, Brophy looks really, really tough on defense. We've already talked about Walker Adams. We've got Connor Murphy, the other guy who won a spotlight. Probably doesn't get as much attention. Uh, the, the attention that he actually deserves is Dante Diaz and Fonte. Plays defensive end, plays outside linebacker. Dad played in the NFL, so he's got that good lineage. He himself already has three Division I scholarship offers, Oregon State, New Mexico uh, among them. So he's a guy that I really, really like. His luck is versatility. He's about six foot one, six foot two, 205 pounds. Does a lot. High motor type player. I'm going to talk about another Desert Vista guy. You talked about Culp. I'm going to talk about a possible breakout running back this season and Laylon Diller. This is a guy that played on both ends of the football last season, spent some time at running back, did a little bit at DB, broke up some passes, hard hitter, forced some fumbles. He's going to be one of the premier running backs for the Dan Hines and the Thunder this year. And talking to some coaches, you talked to some people as well, Jason. He was one of the most impressive offensive threats during spring ball and passing league this, tap, this past season. Going down to Tucson, Drew Dixon. He now, there's two Drew Dixons in the state. Let's not, not confuse them. Sabino's Drew Dixon, who I'm going to spotlight. Going to, he played wide receiver last year for Jay Campos as a sophomore. Now, Campos is going to move him over and play him at quarterback. He likes to take his best, best athlete and play him there. But I think he's a Division I wide receiver. He's six foot four, almost 190 pounds right now. Kids just like, don't, don't grow on trees like that. They're not walking around campus. He's going to be a Division I athlete. I'll talk about the other Drew Dixon. He's over at Pinnacle High School, fullback. Linebacker. He's committed to Air Force. He is a team captain for the Pioneers going into his senior season. Him next to Justin Mandrola, who we may or may not to get to later on in the Daily Dozens, uh, are one of the top linebacking duos in the state. Dixon is the heart and soul of this team, and Pinnacle could go as far as the level of play that they get on both ends of the football from him. South Point has two bookend offensive tackles that I really like. The first one I'm going to spotlight is Dylan Eckmeyer, a guy committed to the University of Montana, six foot four, 275 pounds, did very, very good at Montana's camp, got that offer and committed. Plays right tackle now. I think he's going to end up being an interior guy at the next level, but a guy that I really like. Second team all section last year, but he's one of my front runners for uh, all state contention in 2015. Daily Dozen Episode 3, the home of the Desert Vista Thunder. The third guy this episode, Alex Farina, their quarterback, their leader, the heart and soul of their team, has offers from multiple schools at the next level, including Northern Arizona. This is a very, very impressive guy, and I think the thing that stands out most about him is his smarts. He is great at reading defenses. He is very smart with the football, and this team could be much better than they were a year ago because of a guy like Alex Farina calling the shots. Uh, Deontay Flores at Flowin Wells High School had a tremendous junior season, had 24 touchdowns rushing. He had 1,400 yards on the ground. I think he is one of the most underrated, most slept on players in the entire state. Go down there and watch him play. If you get an extra, uh, you get a free Friday night, you'll be, um, you'll be impressed. Another a small school player that I want to talk about, Ralph Frias, last year at Stafford High School. I saw him play in left tackle. And I'm thinking, who is this kid on tape? Six foot six, 310 pounds, starting as a freshman at left tackle. And I saw him at 
Arizona State's camp this summer, and I'm convinced I am sold. This kid is a Division One prospect. If he played in the Valley, I think he would have Division One scholarship offers right now, which says a ton about his ability. If schools are smart and they go out of Safford High School and recruit, this is a national level prospect. Last and certainly not least, another small school guy, Elijah Gamage. Gamage, a familiar name. His older brother, Fred Gamage, played at Brophy. He's now at Arizona State, former walk on, turned scholarship player. It's a great story. Elijah Gamage is waiting in the wings. The younger brother, Valley Christian, one of their top playmakers on both sides of the football, a guy to watch. If he's just like his brother with the same work ethic, he could be poised for a great high school football career. That's it for Daily Dozen, episode number three.